Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. Tonight I want to talk about um, the Audio GD Master 9 headphone amp and the SPL Fonitor XE headphone amp. Um, this is kind of a comparison, not so much a shootout, but um, I just want to talk about both of these amps and and how the two compared to each other. Um, First thing I wanted to mention is that, like I promised in my last video, I got rid of the noisy water bottle. Um, I didn't realize that I was squeezing the thing while I was talking and it was making a bunch of noise, so I got a different water bottle. This one uh, should be a lot more quiet, so I'm sorry about that because uh, I watched a couple of my videos and it was pretty distracting. So, anyway. Um, these amps, uh, sound-wise, are actually pretty similar in my opinion. Um, the Audio GD, I've had it for quite a while, and it's become my reference headphone amp. And the Fonitor XE, I've only had about a month, and it's actually due to go back, so um, I'm going to only have it another day or so. Anyway, uh, a month should have been enough time to, you know, listen to it as much as I wanted to, but um, the fact is I had a really busy uh, month of May with my work, with my actual job that I do, and I do have to pay the bills, so anyway, I got to spend maybe an hour a day with this amp, so um, probably 25, 30 hours on it, and, you know, um, Got a pretty good feel for what it can do, but um, didn't really get to dig in as deep as I wanted to. So, anyway, um, like I said, both of these amps, to me, um, have a very similar sound. They are both crystal clear. Um, the detail and the uh, resolution is outstanding on both of them. They are both absolutely dead neutral. Neither one adds anything or takes away anything from the sound. They don't boost the bass. They don't, the treble doesn't roll off, nothing. I mean, just dead neutral, absolutely clear. Um, and you are going to hear exactly what is on the recording. And um, so because the sound is so similar. I mean, to be honest with you, and I think I mentioned this in my um, review of the uh, Fonitor, that even after a month with this amp, I really don't know if I could tell the difference between these two amps in a blind test. They're that close to me. I, I mean, I'm sure there's some differences, but those differences are small and you would have to really look for them. And I just didn't get a chance to put the time in to really, you know, dig in and look for those small differences. So, I mean, like I said, I probably couldn't tell the difference between the two in a blind test. So what it comes down to is these amps are quite a bit different in a lot of other ways other than sound. They're different in features, they're different in size, weight, inputs, outputs, um, the, the, where they're made, there's a lot of differences. So that's what I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, if you're trying to make a choice between one or the other of these amps, there's a lot of other factors that I think really outweigh the sound differences because the sound is so close to me. So anyway, um, I'll start with, first of all, where they're made. The Fonitor XE is made in Germany, and Germany has a very good reputation for building high-quality products. The um, Audio GD is made in China, and, you know, there's a lot of um, people that won't even buy anything from China, um, you know. But in my opinion, there is a lot of junk coming out of China, but I do believe there are a few um, audio companies that are putting out some high quality products, and I personally believe that Audio GD is one of those. So, um, you know, that right there might be enough to make the decision for some people. Um, and in fact, I'm sure it will be um, Germany versus China as far as, you know, where the thing was made. So anyway, next we'll get to, um, I want to talk about the size and weight. 
Um, basically, we're talking a very large amp, which would be the Fonitor, versus a huge amp, which would be the um, M9. The Fonitor is 11 inches wide, 13 inches deep, and 4 inches tall. The M9 is 17 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and about the same 4 inches tall. The biggest problem, I mean 17 inches wide is your standard width for a stereo component, a full size component. The biggest problem is the 18 inches deep because by the time you put cables on the back of it, especially like um, XLR cables, you've got about, six, about three more inches of room you need. So now you basically need an absolute minimum a 20 inch deep shelf, if not a 24 inch deep shelf, to put this thing on. So, um, you know, as far as putting it on a desktop, uh, you quickly run out of room with this thing. I mean, like I said, it's a large amp versus a huge amp. And then weight-wise, the uh, Fonitor weighs 11 and a quarter pounds, and the Audio GD weighs in at 32 pounds. So the thing, um, not only huge, but very heavy for a headphone amp. Um, the Fonitor puts out almost no heat whatsoever. The thing runs maybe a couple degrees above room temperature. The Audio GD probably um, runs, I think I measured it at about 106 degrees in a 70 degree room. So you're looking at, you know, 25, 26 degrees above room temperature. And you do need to leave a little bit of space around it to dissipate that heat. You know, I um, I normally, I don't put anything on top of it. I just stack them for this picture. So, um, Normally, I've got, you know, probably about eight inches of clearance above the Audio GD to let that heat get away from it. Um, inputs. The Fonitor has two inputs on it. Um, it has the sing one set of RCA single-ended inputs and one set of XLR balanced inputs. The M9 has five sets of inputs, and that would be two sets of single-ended inputs, RCA jacks, and three sets of balanced inputs. One would be, uh, or two of those, would be full-size three-pin XLRs, and one is a three-pin mini XLR, which um, Audio GD set, calls the ACSS uh, input. And I guess it's something similar to what Krell uses, and I don't know all the details about it, but it is a balanced form of input, but it's current-driven, regular, as opposed to voltage. I'm not sure how it works, but it's supposed to be really super low noise. So anyway, um, basically five sets of inputs on the um, Audio GD. Uh, headphone outputs. The Fonitor actually has four, which would be one single-ended and one balanced on the front and one single-ended and one balanced on the rear of the amp. You can't use the front and rear at the same time. There's a switch that switches back and forth. Um, but I believe you can use the single-ended and the balanced at the same time, either the front or back. The Audio GD um, has three sets of headphone outputs all on the front. One would be your quarter inch single-ended, uh, your four pin XLR, and your double three pin XLRs. Um, so that is different about it. Um, nothing on the rear like on the uh, Fonitor. Uh, outputs, um, the Audio GD has preamp outputs. In fact, it has three of them, one single-ended and two balanced. The Fonitor XE does not have preamp outs. It does not have a preamp function. If you need a preamp, um, SPL makes a very similar amp called the Fonitor X that does have preamps out, preamp out. So um, if that's something you need, then um, you might want to look at the Fonitor X instead of the XE. Um, 
The Audio GD is not available with a built-in DAC. They do sell several different DACs at uh, quite a range of prices, but you cannot get a built-in DAC with the M9. The Fonitor XE, there is a, an available built-in DAC, which has four digital inputs, um, your coaxial, your optical, um, what else? Um, oh, USB, USB, and um, and what's the other one? Um, it's a three-pin XLR balanced input for digital. Um, e, I forget what it's called. Anyway, um, the Fonitor XE um, has adjustable gain, but it has to be done from the bottom of the amp. Um, there's a couple of switches on the bottom called DIP switches. And one of them boosts the RCA single-ended inputs by 10 uh, decibels, the sensitivity. And the other one boosts the headphone output by 22 decibels. But like I said, they're underneath the amp and kind of tough to get to. The Master 9 has one gain control it's on the front of the amp and it switches from a low gain of either 14 decibels or a high gain of 20 decibels um, both both of these have remote control function but only the audio gd actually comes with the remote uh, the audio gd comes with a, it's actually a very heavy looks like it's carved out of a solid block of aluminum uh, remote control and it um, raises the volume up and down, it mutes it, and it switches between the five inputs. The um, Fonitor doesn't come with a remote, but the, um, it can be run with a remote. You can use any infrared remote, and it has a button on the back, and basically it learns the frequency, and it's very easy to set up take you about two minutes to do it and you can use um, remote that you already have. I use the one that came with my Cambridge Audio CD player and had it set up in a couple minutes. I initially had it set up backwards where I'd push the up button and it, the volume would go down and vice versa but I redid it and got it set properly and that was my mistake not the amp. So anyway um, it has a learning re it, a remote function that it, you use your remote and it learns the signal. So um, both of them, the volume can be adjusted by remote control. Uh, as far as the volume control itself, the Fonitor uses a um, motorized Alps potentiometer and the Audio GD uses a um, quite different system. It's a relay controlled resistor ladder volume control so um, it actually it, it's divided into 100 steps from 0 to 99 so um, and as you dial the knob it's just kind of um, it kind of clicks it has like light clicks and um, as you go from you know each step through um, the volume knob on the um, Fonitor is, they're both large, they're both real smooth, they both feel real nice, and um, the one on the Fonitor, um, very easy to use, uh, very precise. Um, the big difference with these amps um, comes down to really, uh, like I said, features, and the Fonitor has a couple of uh, major features that the Audio GD do, just doesn't have. One would be the Matrix, um, which is a cross-feed system. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. You can go back and look at the video I just put out a couple days ago on the Fonitor, which explains it, but it's just, um, like I said, it's a cross-feed system that simulates listening to speakers while you're listening to headphones. So um, it's a pretty cool system and it works pretty well in my opinion. It also has another knob that um, is called laterality that is basically a very fine tuning adjustment of your balance. 
and it doesn't really um, affect the volume that much left or right but it, what it does is it kind of shifts the center of the sound stage and so if your ears you're hearing slightly different one ear to another or um, or maybe your headphones one driver you know the drivers aren't matched perfectly and one's slightly louder you can compensate for it with the laterality knob which is a very cool feature in my opinion um, the noise floor of these amps I would say, I, I've always said that the Audio GD is dead quiet, while the Fonitor is even more quiet than the Audio GD. Um, I use the, the highest sensitivity headphones I have to check these, and I've got to be about three quarters of the way up on the volume on the um, Audio GD before I pick up any hiss at all with very sensitive headphones. I mean, these are um, like IEM sensitive. The Fonitor, I've got to be about 90% of the way up on the volume before I can pick up any hiss at all. So neither one of these amps you are ever going to hear any background noise, even with IEMs at normal listening levels. Um, the noise floor is just going to be way below anything you're going to hear at all. Uh, the power ratings, and I actually um, wrote these down. These are the power ratings that come from the two companies. And it's um, kind of strange because the, um, the Audio GD kind of has a reputation for having unlimited power. And at the, going into lower impedance headphones, that is the case. Uh, at 40 ohms, the Audio GD is rated at 9 watts per channel. I mean, that's huge. That's just huge amounts of power. And in comparison, um, the SPL is only rated at 2.7 watts into 32 ohms. But um, about the 120 ohm range, as far as impedance of your headphones, it switches and the SPL actually puts out more power than the Audio GD does once you get up to about 120 ohms. So into um, low impedance headphones, the Audio GD actually has quite a bit more power, like 9 watts versus uh, 2.7. But when you get up to, um, say, 300 ohms on your headphones, the uh, SPL is now putting out 2.0 watts compared to the M9 only putting out one and a quarter watts. And at 600 ohms, the SPL puts out one full watt where the um, M9 is at 0 0.63. So not a huge difference, but um, like I said, the um, Audio GD is, at, is putting out more power into low impedance headphones which would be most of your planar headphones that need a whole lot of current to drive. I mean, these are some of the really power hungry headphones. And, um, you know, like um, the, the hardest one I have to drive is the Hi-Fi Man HE 560. And actually, both of these amps do a very good job with that. Um, there are some tougher ones like the Hi-Fi Man HE 6 and... Um, the Abyss headphones are very well known for being hard to drive. I don't think the M9 would ever have a problem with any of those. Um, I have heard that the um, Fonitor does come up a little bit short with the um, HE6 from Hi-Fi Man, which is a 50 uh, ohm headphone and just needs outrageous amounts of power. But probably anything other than that, the Fonitor is going to have enough power for any headphone out there. Um, in fact, another one that's supposed to be real hard to drive is the Odyssey um, LCD4. But that is um, hard to drive more because it's a higher impedance headphone. I believe that's 200 ohms. So at 200 ohms, the Fonitor is actually going to put out more power than the Audio GD does. So it might actually be better for the LCD4. So um, really, both of these amps are extremely versatile. That is why I uh, chose the Audio GD 
in the first place was because it's an amp that works with just about any headphone out there and as a reviewer that's what I needed. Well I had never heard or never had a chance to hear the monitor until now and like the Audio GD same thing very versatile headphone amp that works with just about pretty much any headphone you can throw at it. So um, they both have that in common too. Both extremely versatile. Um, I looked up the warranties on these and I know that the um, Audio GD does have a 10 year warranty. Um, for the first year they cover shipping both ways and uh, parts and labor. It's a complete warranty but I'm not sure about this. I'm, I was looking at their website and I'm not sure if it has to go all the way back to China for warranty repairs. It does look like there's a few authorized um, dealers or agents I think they call them in Europe and Russia so I don't know if it could go to one of those for repair but as far as I know there is no place to get warranty repairs done in the United States so you're looking at shipping this thing out of the country for a warranty repair. They do have a very long warranty of 10 years. The first year um, apparently they reimburse you for your shipping to get it to them and then they pay to ship it to get it to get it back to you. After the first year they cover parts and labor but not um, shipping. So that could get pretty expensive. So that's another you know major factor in your decision here. Um, I was looking for the warranty information on the monitor and I, I am really not sure what the warranty is. Um, I thought I heard somewhere that it was three years, but what I saw on the uh, website, it kind of looked like it was only a one year warranty, so I'm not sure. And I don't know if it has to go back to Germany for warranty repairs. I know there are some dealers in the United States. So it's very possible that warranty repairs can be done by them. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, Price-wise, there's a bit of a difference. Um, the Fonitor sells in the United States for $19.99. Uh, the Audio GD sells for $14.30, which is quite a bit lower. But um, there's the... Monitor. I looked at um, one of the places you can get it for one nineteen ninety nine is headphones.com and they ship it for free. So nineteen ninety nine, that's it. No tax. I think unless you live in the same state and um, <clears throat> anyway, no shipping charges. So nineteen ninety nine, you have it. The Audio GD, it's a little bit different because it's got to be shipped from China and they do add shipping on top of that. And in fact, um, I believe the only way to pay for it is through PayPal. And I believe that Audio GD adds a PayPal fee on top of that. So now, by the time you add shipping and and because the thing's so heavy, it weighs 32 pounds and it comes in a very large box. I believe when I got mine, I think the shipping was about $118. So you add that onto the 1430. I think there was um, the, the PayPal fee, I think they added on top. So you're up around $1,600 by the time you buy the Audio GD. So now you're about $400 apart in price. And basically that comes down to that when you buy something bought that's made in Germany, the cost of labor is a lot higher in Germany, so it's going to cost more. So, um, Plus you never know what's going to happen with the exchange rates between um, us and China, so that price could change. But as far as I know, it's been stable for about a year. So, um, also the monitor is available with the built-in DAC I mentioned earlier and with the built-in DAC that puts the price up to $27.99 so um, it is quite a bit more expensive or if you go with the um, monitor X which has a preamp function I believe that that is $24.99 
So you've got a lot um, to think about here if you're trying to make a choice between one of these or the other. Um, like I said, sound wise, I think they're very, very similar, but um, as far as features, they're very different. Um, so, you know, you got to decide what features are important to you, what you want. I mean, do you want a preamp? Uh, do the extra inputs um, on the M9, is that something you want? Um, do you want it with a built in DAC? Then you need to go with the Fonitor. Um, the Matrix Crossfeed is very interesting and works. Um, I didn't listen to it a lot, but I do think it does sound much more like listening to speakers. So if you're one of these people, and there's a lot out there that prefer the natural sound stage of speakers over the exaggerated super stereo effect of headphones, and if you're one of those, um, I would consider checking out the Fonitor because um, you know that it does a pretty good job of. Um, simulating the way speakers would sound. Um, oh, and then I didn't for completely forgot to mention the VU meters. They don't really um, serve a whole lot of purpose as far as I know. I can't think of any reason I would really need them, but they just look really cool and they light up and so you can sit there in the dark listening to music, watching the meters bounce up and down, and just a very cool feature. So, And um, then there's the size and weight, too. I mean, the, the Fonitor's barely more than a third the weight of the Audio GD, and it has about half the footprint because um, it's narrower and not near as deep. You don't need a 24-inch shelf to put it on. So just a lot of things to take into consideration. Um, if you're running high impedance headphones that need a lot of power, the Fonitor might be the better um, choice. If you're running low impedance headphones that need a lot of power, um, the Audio GD might be the better choice. And then a um, little bit of difference in the price, but um, not a huge difference. So anyway, um, I'm not going to tell you that I think one amp is better than the other. Like I said in the beginning, this isn't a shootout. It's a comparison to help you decide which amp you want. Um, I think they're both great amps, and I could, I could use either one of them as my reference amp and be totally happy. Um, you know, if the Fonitor is due to go back. If I could keep that and, you know, instead of the Audio GD, it'd be very tempting. Um, you know, to me, they're kind of on equal ground, just different features. And um, like I said, I think they are both outstanding amps, and I don't think you could go wrong with either one of them. So um, I'm going to let you take it from here, let you decide which direction you want to go. Um, I'm going to wrap this up now. Once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. And if this video helped you at all, please give me a thumbs up. Please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you're all welcome to join us over at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. Thank you.